Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the Hitman movies. I am your host, Agent 47 Leon. Let's be honest, I was going to wear a bald cap for this video, but when I put it on, it was extremely uncomfortable. And I knew I would not be able to last the entire, I don't know, two hour recording that would take for me to make this video. So we're just going with this suit, baby. God damn it. I look more like Donald Trump. China. What's up? China. China. You're all going to love this video. You're going to love it. It is the best video. Everybody loves it. Everybody tells me they love it. Hitman as a game series, for all its jank and goofiness, has provided me with countless hours of entertainment over the years. But how are the two movies? Unsurprisingly, whenever I mention that there's two of these movies, mostly everybody out there has no idea the second movie even exists. And that's probably for the best, because the first movie... I'd probably give like a 5 out of 10. The second movie is a 2, maybe even a 1 out of 10. Why would anyone want more of you? Their first movie, aptly named Hitman, was released in 2007, and it stars Timothy Oliphant as Agent 47, which is kind of funny because they use an image of the actor from the second movie for the first movie on Amazon Prime. So when I say the general populace is very confused about these movies, Amazon Prime Video couldn't even get it right, so... <laughs> Jason Statham was in the running to play Agent 47, but he lost out to Timothy Oliphant. I don't know, man. I like Timothy Oliphant, but I think it's a shame Jason Statham didn't get a shot at this role. He wasn't even in the second movie. Like, come on, dude. If there was ever a game character to play in a movie for Jason Statham, it's Agent 47. He's already got the tough guy thing going. He's already bald. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know, just put a barcode on his head and call it a day. Hitman was directed by Xavier Jens, or Gens. This is the same guy that directed 2017's Cold Skin, which is kind of like the movie The Lighthouse mixed with Call of Duty Nazi Zombies. It's a pretty fun movie, but not the best thing ever. He's made some other stuff I haven't seen, like Frontiers, The Divide, and Cell. The movie starts by showing Agent 47 getting the barcode tattooed on the back of his head at a young age. Aesthetically, it's pretty cool, but in reality, they would tattoo this barcode anywhere else. <laughs> Like literally anywhere else. Maybe not the forehead, okay? But you know what I mean. Approved. <laughs> Later on in the movie, this barcode tattoo appears on the back of the head and much smaller. I guess it's because he grew into it. You know that assassin trope in movies where the guy getting killed gets home late at night and the assassin is sitting there in the dark waiting for them? Well, this movie starts exactly like that. Where's my salad? I forgot to order salad. Oh my God, I'm stupid in the kitchen where you left it. And then we go back in time three months. So 47 forces this random guy in Africa to swallow a shit ton of explosives. He then sends this guy back to his brother to eliminate a bunch of people at once. Later at a federal police HQ meeting, they discuss how this guy swallowed a pound of C4. Well, one of the guys at the meeting is like, oh my God, he swallowed a pound of C4. But how do they know he swallowed it? The only people that knew he did that aside from 47 are in pieces. No motive, no forensic evidence, no witnesses. Who was the detective at this crime scene? Damien Darkblood from Invincible? Also, all of these Nigerians speak English to each other for some reason. <laughs> What happened to his voice? I know they do this in movies to make it easier for the English person who's watching it. I don't like to read when I watch a movie, dude. It takes me out of it. It's too much work. <laughs> Come on, dude. Make the movie more immersive and just make them speak their language. Exactly as he was delivered. There's this character named Inspector Mike. He's been searching for Agent 47 for three years. Also, they never really tell us how this Inspector Mike guy caught on to Agent 47 to begin with. He's just this guy who's been tracking him for a long time. And he knows somehow that all these assassinations throughout the world are his doing. I mean, they have to be, right? Because they're unsolved. No more. Motive, no forensic evidence, no witnesses. I swear to God, all this guy did was look up a bunch of unsolved assassinations and he was like, they're all related. They must be. <laughs> it's him, sir. It's our guy. Probably. So he just goes to the most recent one and he's like, where is he? <laughs> because they don't give us anything else to go on. He's just this guy who has a suspicion that Agent 47 exists. It's like he just looks up random assassinations of important people around the world and suspects they're all related in some way without any evidence. I love when they show us the map of all the assassinations. They're strangely evenly spaced out. They were trying to make it look as even as possible, you know? <laughs> 
which makes it even funnier that there's hardly any in Russia. It kind of makes sense because in the games you travel around the world, but still, there's only one in Russia. One. And guess where the next scene takes place, people? St. Petersburg, Russia. 47 has to fill out the map, dude, to visit every country and do at least one assassination in each one. <laughs> I get the idea though, you know? He can't stay in one spot for too long or people will catch him. 47 is then hit on by a woman at a bar and she speaks English. They might kill you for that. What are you doing to that whiskey? You're boring, so go fuck yourself. She doesn't even ask him if he speaks Russian or not. You would think she would initiate the conversation in Russian, right? Because they're in Russia? But no, she just starts talking to him in English. She made a great guess. <laughs> She automatically assumed he was an English speaker for some reason, which sucks because this scene would have been so much cooler if she hit on him in Russian and he responded in Russian, showing the audience that his intelligence goes beyond that of just clever ways to kill people. Next master. Later in 47's apartment, he logs onto his super cheesy computer. It was given to him by the organization. The logo flips on screen whenever he logs on. <laughs> It looks more like an intro to a Call of Duty trick shooting montage than it does this covert official organization for hitmen. An automated voice then tells 47, Africa job complete. The money has been wired to your account. The money has been wired to your account. It sounds so unprofessional and awkwardly straightforward. This woman overseeing 47's jobs is named Diana. She informs him that his Russian job has been changed and it needs to be done publicly for political reasons. And this job is to take out the Russian president, Mikhail Belikov. We get a news broadcast with the Russian president, and it's in English, of course. Mr. Belikov, I'm sorry. And then 47 takes him out with a sniper rifle. There's a zoom in shot at the building 47 is in, and it's so goofy. 47 then does something very strange here. He puts his stuff in a briefcase and detonates it in order to get rid of the evidence. But in doing so, he reveals his position. They even show the blast from the window, and Russians notice it, so it wasn't the smartest way to go about doing that. Later in the train station, 47 gets a call from Diana, telling him that there is a witness in St. Petersburg that he needs to take out. So then he attempts to kill this witness in broad daylight. <laughs> And there's people everywhere. He's not wearing a disguise. He just walks up to her, ready to kill her. That's one way of getting rid of a witness to one of your assassinations, by assassinating that witness in front of a hundred other people. <laughs> Apparently this girl had seen him on the day that Belikov was killed. 47 tells Diana that Belikov took a bullet through the nasal cavity. He took a direct hit through the nasal cavity. I watched it myself. But if you look at the assassination, he's actually shot through the forehead. Maybe 47's memory isn't the best. Turns out the person that 47 killed in St. Petersburg was not the president at all. The actual Belikov has a head wound, but he wasn't killed. And it turns out the client to kill Belikov was Belikov himself. Oh my God. And and the plot thickens. In the next scene, the Russian Secret Service raid the hotel building 47 is staying in. This scene is awesome. 47 jumps out of windows. He slides down elevator shaft. He kills multiple guys, then slips away by jumping into a canal. I mean, yeah, he did get kind of lucky during this part, but still. 47 tracks down this girl he was assigned to kill, and he finds out basically nothing by interrogating her. 47 decides to use this girl as bait. He brings her to a train station where a bunch of other agents are. I guess all of the agents suck aside from 47 because he takes down four of them in this next part with relative ease, three of which he fights at the same time, all of them with dual wakazashis. How about dying with a little dignity? It's a pretty awkward fight, but it's also kind of amazing. Throughout this movie, they're trying to paint this morality struggle within 47, and they do it with his new hot goth GF, Nika. <laughs> and the entire time he's with this woman, the only thing I'm thinking is, he's only letting her live because she's hot, right? If this was some random ugly chick, huh? he would have killed her no hesitation, just like the men he killed in the hotel you know, because he needs to kill her to remain anonymous. There's a scene when they're talking to each other in a car and I'm just sitting there thinking, he only cares about what she has to say because she's hot, right? That's the only reason, right? This guy who is trained from birth to kill people and that's it. And then all of a sudden he starts questioning all this because I mean, she doesn't look half bad, dude. <laughs> 
I'm just saying if they used an average everyday woman, it would make his morality struggle so much more impactful. There's a part when they're in a car and they use ADR in 47's lines and his mouth doesn't match what he says at all. And it looks really bad. Back at the station, you interfere. It's okay to use ADR, sometimes it's unavoidable, but when they mess up this bad, it's so distracting. Nika describes her backstory to 47. Basically, she was sold to Belikov as a sex slave. There's a scene where they show that he's like beating her, and apparently he only paid $300 for her. I'm his property. Would you like to know how much he paid for me? 300. Now I know this movie came out in 2007, so we got to account for inflation, right? <laughs> But $300? Oh my God! Four quarters! I'm just saying, if these human traffickers are selling the thin, pretty women for $300, they're in the wrong business. It's probably not worth the risk at that point. You know what I mean? It's honestly more lucrative to set up an ice cream stand outside of a soccer game. Oh, sorry, football for all you Brits. Butter, water, football, mate. When they show Nika getting whipped with the antenna in the basement, the result would have left scars all over her back. Yet later in the film, when they show her back, it's clear and scar free. There's a scene where 47 and Nika walk down an alley and 47 says, this place is nice. This place looks nice. And for a moment, you forget that you're watching a Hitman movie. <laughs> Like these two are just having a lovely time, aren't they? It's pretty cute, you know? They're on vacation. 47 is just vibing with his new hot goth GF. It's a pretty good day. A good day to kill someone. You know that thing in spy movies where one guy will sit down with another guy at a restaurant and start explaining everything that happened in the restaurant as they walked in. Like they'll describe what someone's wearing without looking at them. They know what's in someone's purse. It's supposed to show the audience like, oh my God, this guy, he takes a lot of mental notes. Well, there's a scene like that in this movie and 47 starts describing everything in the room. Nika asks him a question about a woman and then 47 says this. That's not a woman. Uh-oh, time to cancel Agent 47. <laughs> How would he know this person's genitals? Come on, dude. It could have just been a masculine looking lady. You never know. They exist. I like to imagine as they walked into the restaurant, Agent 47 scanning everything, and he takes a look at this random woman's bulge. <laughs> and he's like, well. And apparently 47 knows that Nika isn't wearing panties. You're not wearing any underwear. I guess he's kind of a perv too. Why are you looking, 47? <laughs> the assassination in this restaurant is pretty cool. 47 switches out someone's drink, so his target gets sick. He goes into the bathroom and takes them all out before leaving. That night, Nika tries to seduce 47, but 47 won't let just anybody take his precious virginity. And then this movie tries to turn 47 into John Wick. He takes out a room full of goons. It's pretty great, not gonna lie. I didn't remember this movie being so badass. So obviously 47's mission now is to take out the real Belikov because he cares for Nika and he wants to keep her safe. There's this really cool scene where 47 abducts Belikov's right-hand man. He chains him up in a bathtub and he's like, you can either help me or die. It's your choice. He puts a rubber ducky in the bathtub and he's like, this will put things in perspective. And then he tells him that he retrieved that duck from his house last night. I picked it up last night when I was in your house. The action scenes in this movie are pretty fun, but a bunch of this movie is just about this random Inspector Mike guy tracking down 47, and I found that quite boring. There are a couple moments when 47 wears disguises like he does in the games, and I appreciated that. By the end of the movie, he obviously assassinates Belikov. He lets the Inspector live, and he continues to protect his hot goth GF like any self-respecting king would. Apparently, Interpol officers, which is what Inspector Mike is, do not directly conduct inquiries in different countries and Interpol's constitution forbids its involvement in several types of crimes, such as political ones. You're telling me to fuck off? The majority of the first movie is supposed to take place in St. Petersburg, Russia. So it's kind of weird when they use places that have big signs on facades that aren't in Russian. This is Ivan Vazov National Theater, which is located in Bulgaria. The sign on that building is not in Russian, but Bulgarian. And it's a historical landmark in Sofia, the largest city in Bulgaria. A little later in the movie, they show the central rail station in St. Petersburg, which is actually
actually a Kiev station in Moscow. They even painted out the sign on top of the entrance for some reason, but left it on the right side. And all of the station scenes happened in the Sofia Central Station. As a matter of fact, the majority of the scenes were filmed in Sofia, and not a single scene with 47 was filmed in Russia. This B-roll of Moscow, Russia is actually downtown in St. Petersburg. There's a scene in the second half of the movie that can't be happening on the Russian-Turkish border because Russia doesn't border Turkey. <laughs> The Soviet Union did, but as you can see here, the movie takes place in the year it was released, in 2007, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, which is supported by this map in the beginning of the movie. This video is brought to you by Gamer Sups. Are you a gamer like me and you need some energy because all you do is sit around and you don't eat the correct foods? Gamer Sups is your answer. It tastes good, gives you energy, They've got a billion flavors, delicious drinks that are easy to make. They'll give you a ton of energy and boobs. I mean, who doesn't like some anime booba? If there's one thing missing from Alien Clothing, my clothing brand, it's gotta be the anime boobs. I mean, come on, dude. Gamer Sups is here to fill in that void. Check out this shirt. Wowza, look at those jugs, dude. What? They've got tons of shirts with anime babes on them. They've even got flavors with big old jugs on them. And if that wasn't enough, zero sugar, zero carbs. This is a healthier and cheaper alternative to regular energy drinks. Get yourself a free sample pack, use code Elvis to get free shipping, and a free alien sticker. You got nothing to lose, everything to gain, you'll probably love it. My favorite flavor is peach tea, but I also love strawberry lemonade. It's very simple to do, you just take two scoops, Put it in the thing, fill it up with cold water, throw some ice in it, and you got yourself a delicious beverage that will keep you awake and uh, gaming forever. All right, now this is where the fun begins. Now we're gonna be talking about the movie Hitman, Agent 47. It was released in 2015. This movie stars Rupert Friend as Agent 47. This guy has been in a ton of stuff you might have seen, but much like Agent 47, you might not have recognized him at all. He was in Asteroid City, The French Dispatch, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, that new Obi-Wan Kenobi show, Pride and Prejudice, and a bunch of other stuff. Not gonna lie, when I saw him in this movie, I did not recognize him, which is weird because because I've seen him a bunch before. This movie was directed by a man named Alexander Bach, and this is his one and only movie on IMDb. And I gotta say, if this is truly his only movie ever, it could have been worse. You know, as far as the movie making side of it. And while this movie is really bad, I'm also comparing it to movies that have been made by seasoned directors. So I guess take everything I'm about to say about this movie with a grain of salt. Also, the music in this movie blows. It's so bad. It's way too loud and distracting in most scenes. And a lot of the music sounds like stock suspense music you would find on YouTube. <laughs> What really annoyed me about 47 in this movie is that he's not completely bald. He's like the thinnest bit of hair on his head. 47's supposed to be clean shaven bald. Right off the bat, this movie turns into John Wick from Wish.com. And don't get me wrong, I think it's important to show how capable 47 is when shit hits the fan. But I think peak 47 is when he accomplishes an insane hit and vanishes without anyone knowing he was there. The first movie did this much better, I think. I know the beauty of the games is that you can approach each each mission however you want. For certain missions, you can go in guns blazing if you want to. It won't be nearly as satisfying and you'll probably die, but still, it's an option. But it's a video game, that's what makes them fun, you know? Agent 47 isn't John Wick, but these movies want him to be John Wick so bad. Instead of being faceless like in the first movie, Diana's face is shown in this one, which I'm really not a big fan of because she doesn't make many appearances in the movie. I think she appears like once or twice throughout the entire movie. So why even show her face? It adds nothing to the movie. It's almost kind of confusing because you expect her to make some sort of appearance later on, but she doesn't. Zachary Quinto is in this movie too. Some of you might know him from the show Heroes. In this movie, he plays a guy named John Smith. You probably heard that and you're like, wow, that's kind of a basic ass name. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fake to me, which it is in the movie. Like that's not his actual name. And when they reveal that, it's supposed to be this big surprise, but obviously that's not his name. <laughs> anyway, let me continue. This movie's biggest flaw is that it centers around this random woman named Katya. You would think a movie about Hitman would focus on Agent 47? That's like having a James Bond movie 
focusing on the love interest makes no sense. In fact, 47 is the antagonist for a good portion of this movie. It's only until you've watched like halfway through when 47 is revealed to be the good guy all of a sudden. Obviously, 47 is hired to kill this girl. John Smith tries to convince Katya that he's there to help her and that 47 is there to kill her. 47 fires on them at the exact moment he's in their line of sight, which isn't very Agent 47. There's tons of people around and he just takes out his gun and starts shooting at them. 47 should be a lot more methodical than that. He's not in a disguise. He just walk straight towards them as himself with his gun drawn. It's so weird, which is such a lazy way to write this character. Knowing that this agent is after you should make you shit your pants, you know what I mean? And not because you see him walking towards you with his gun drawn, but because he could be anybody. That's the beauty of the Hitman series. You don't know where this motherfucker is coming from. He's a ghost. He comes out of nowhere and kills people and then vanishes like nobody was there. Like this person just dropped dead. If you're going to make a movie about Agent 47, but it's in someone else's point, Point of view you gotta build up some hype you know what i mean talk about how he could be anybody they should have this girl up against a wall looking frantically around this entire scene of 47 trying and failing to kill this girl because he's being thwarted by this random dude john smith is awful i hated it it makes 47 out to be an amateur hitman when not too long ago they showed us a scene where he took out an entire building of armed men by himself there's one part where 47 and john smith tumble onto some train tracks after landing atop a train and they're both uninjured. Eventually, John Smith, Katya, and their escape driver start to drive away. 47 makes an impossible shot with his pistol and kills the driver. I hate this. How can he make a shot like that, but miss others that should be a lot easier in comparison, like five minutes ago? We learned that Katya's last name is Van Dees. Nuts. <laughs> miss Van Dees, nuts. Miss Van Dees? Nuts. <laughs> We learn that John Smith works for a corporation named Syndicate, and he was hired to protect Katya. When he's explaining this to her, she goes, you're protecting me from who? From who? Oh, um, I don't know, the bald guy? with the red tie that was shooting at us earlier. What she should have said is this. Who is he? Who does he work for? Do you know who he is? Why is he after me? Any of those would do. John Smith fires into the air in front of the US Embassy so that a bunch of soldiers will apprehend them, in turn saving them from 47. But why not shoot into the ground? You know what goes up must come down, right? Also, what makes this so much funnier, later in the movie, it's revealed that John Smith is like a super agent. He can not only go toe to toe with 47, 47 almost loses to him. I know throughout the film they could be improving his body. It's just silly that he wouldn't just fight him, you know? What 47 does in this next scenario is infuriating. What would you expect to happen right now in this movie? Maybe 47 could infiltrate this place after hours, dress up like a guard, steal something from a guard, find his way in. That would work, right? Guess what actually happens? He just walks into the embassy as himself with like a million guns on him and they apprehend him. Come on, dude. <laughs> Give us a scene of Agent 47 acting like Agent 47. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any scenes where he's dressed up like himself, but just make him smarter, you know? Make him wait around for a guard to be alone. You could go up to him and ask him for a cigarette or something, and then pull the guy into a back alley, choke him out, take his uniform, enter with the dude's badge. It would just be so much more Hitman if he did that, you know? <sighs> So these guys put 47 in an interrogation room. I know what this movie's trying to do, you know? He's so good at what he does that he doesn't even have to try. Apprehend me, I don't care, I'll escape. It's no problem, I'm just that good. <laughs> And fine, if they want to make him a super agent that can do anything, that's cool, whatever. But why make him approach this situation in the dumbest way possible? And also, if this guy's so good, why doesn't he just walk in and kill everybody like he did in the beginning of the movie? Oh, maybe he cares about lives now. Maybe he doesn't want to kill unnecessarily, I guess. So why put him in this position where he might have to kill people. So how does 47 escape, you might ask? Well, he gets extremely lucky. In this room are two armed men and one moron who brings 47's weapons into the interrogation room. <laughs> 
the interrogator gets heated. So he loads around into the sniper that he's aiming at 47. 47 performs this ridiculous matrix bullshit to escape. He finally uses a disguise, but this time is to escape from a situation that he created for himself. And to top it all off, he gets approached by a soldier as he's trying to exit. So he knocks the guy out. The best part is doing all this didn't get him any closer to Katya or John Smith. It just complicated the situation and put the embassy into high alert. If we graded 47's mission in this movie, it would be an F. Whatever the lowest score is, <laughs> it might not even be a score. It would just be a game over or a fail. Reload and try again, dude. Okay, this jacket is too hot for me. I'm heating up. I gotta take the jacket off, buddy. It's getting too hot in here. <laughs> Holy shit. There's this whole thing about Katya looking for this guy. Like she's doing research on this person. I don't care. And it turns out this person she's looking for is her father. And her father is the person who created the agent program. And the agents are going after her to get to her father. Tell me how to make an agent. It's such an amateur plot twist. It's so childish and uninteresting. I didn't care at all. I got so bored by the end of this movie. There is a pretty cool, albeit unrealistic sniper shot. But then it fades to black immediately afterward. And then we see Katia in the shower. Talk about tonal whiplash, holy shit. Katia asks if this random secret agent's name is actually John Smith. Is your name really John Smith? It's Brian. Seriously? He says his real name is Brian. <laughs> and Katia continues to call him John anyway. It's just that John said that you and all. Our guy Brian is then killed by 47, who finds him there. He then takes Katya hostage. I really don't like Rupert Friend's voice for 47. His look is okay, I guess, even though they should have shaved him completely bald. But his voice is just not good for the character. That took you too long. Because I chose not to kill you. I do long because you're weak. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. Your future is death. Any questions? We learned that 47 and Katia were both part of the agent program, but Katia was smuggled away by her father. 47 remembers this from his youth somehow. He was what, like four years old? Come on, dude. Try and remember anything from that age and you're either lying or you're not remembering it correctly. That's just how it works. I don't make the rules. 47 puts her through a training exercise type thing. He puts her right next to a massive turbine and she has to untie herself from the chair before being sucked into it and killed. <laughs> What the fuck is this? Turns out Katia Van Dies nuts is actually the French word for 90. Your name isn't Katia Van Dies, it's Katia Van Dies, French for 90. So Katia is actually Agent 90, you know? So 47 is quite a few agents behind. So I'm 43 versions better than you. This guy can take out a building full of men by himself without getting injured? What do they need to improve on? <laughs> As 47 is explaining everything to her, he says, you speak French, Mandarin, Spanish, but he has to tell her that her name is the French word for 90. Shouldn't she already know that if she speaks French? What am I? You're the same as me, only better. I'm sorry, but if my name was 9T, I would probably put two and two together. <laughs> Imagine you find out that your father is in charge of this agent program and all the agents have numbers and suspiciously your name sounds exactly like the number 90 in French. Hmm, it doesn't take a genius, dude. And the best part is she's supposed to be one. These people are programmed from birth to be like superhumans, you know, which I hate, by the way. The whole idea that these kids were programmed at birth to have a certain amount of intellect and combat training is the dumbest thing ever, but whatever. It's like in the Matrix, how they download different skills. <laughs> it's free real estate. It would have been funny to show a newly born agent popping out and immediately being like, hey, yo, mom, give your newborn baby some milk, would you? Then there's a part when Katya asks 47 why he shot her if he needed her to find her father. And he pompously responds, I didn't shoot you. I marked you. Why did you shoot me? I marked you. God damn it. I hate this movie, dude. He's talking about that insane sniper shot, by the way. Agent 47 missing a shot? Laughable. Ha! <laughs> he never misses. My boy doesn't miss. Every shot is intentional. Except for this one, this one, um, this one, this one, 
This one, it makes sense that he wouldn't be shooting at Katia now. But what about John Smith or Brian or whatever the hell his name is? Obviously 47 would be shooting at him. If he never missed, he would have turned this guy into Swiss cheese long before the hotel. But of course he wanted them to escape. It was all part of his master plan. What about everything that happened in the embassy? It was all intentional. Source, trust me, bro. <laughs> Knowing how this ends, was it worth it? Knowing how this ends? Definitely. 47 then goes on to explain that her father programmed them to have heightened senses. He tells her this at a normal speaking volume when the men that are after them are literally in the same quiet room as them. Your father programmed you to see and hear everything at extremely heightened levels. I don't think the agents have heightened senses. I think the other people are just wearing noise canceling headphones. I know for a fact, at least one of you expected a Raycon ad right there. 47 uses his handy ability from Dragon Ball Z, instant transmission to pop up behind these two men. <laughs> Nothing personal kid. We get a Wilhelm scream as one guy falls into a machine. Whenever I hear this scream in a movie, it annoys me now. It's not cute anymore. It's just kind of tacky. John Smith or Brian pops up again. He's not dead after all. Oh my. How did he do it? I'm so surprised. He bongs Katya's head against a turbine thing. 47 and Brian exchange some cringe before having a little brawl as the worst background music in existence plays in the background. Feel pretty good for a dead man, John. Almost as good as you. Well, the thing is, I'm special. Let's see. Oh, no. Gringe. <laughs> oh, geez. Is John Smith an agent too? Wait, Agent Smith? I bet this guy is Agent 100, the perfect specimen, the best of the best. Man, that would be epic, watching him face down 47. God, Agent versus Agent, it's gonna be so cool, man. Just like Dragon Ball Z days, Vegeta versus Goku. Oh my God, they learned how to give the agents hair and not just any hair, that's some great hair. John Smith. Bravo, dude. They really wanted you to look your best before you came out of that womb, bro. So Katya saves the day. We then get a scene of 47 explaining more of this dumb shit. So apparently John Smith survived because he has, <clears throat> get ready for this one, subdermal titanium body armor, which is injected into the skin in liquid form. Bruh, what? If 47 knew he had this dumb shit, why not give him a nice shot to the head earlier when you shot him in the hotel? 47 seems to know everything after all. Katya tells 47 where her father is hiding because she knows where he is based on conjecture alone. Man, I really wish I cared about 47 teaching this woman I don't care about how to live the life of an assassin. I know, that took me too long. Katya asks 47 about the barcode. 47 responds by telling her they get the barcode when they're born, which is pretty silly, you know? If any of you have a tattoo, if you can imagine getting a tattoo when you're born, that shit would look nothing like it did when you were born when you grow up. The skin would change and stretch as they aged, and the ink would slowly break down and blur over time, unless the agents get regular touch-ups. I don't know, dude. <laughs> and then we get the obligatory scene of Katya confronting 47 about his ability to feel fear and and love. I think you're lying. This next part is so funny, dude. So Katya is like a little baby. She's a little child. She takes 47's guns while he's sleeping so she can disassemble them and play with them like a toddler. The square block goes in the square hole. <laughs> it's pretty funny that 47 didn't notice her taking them. Anyway, their hotel room is raided and 47 is bamboozled when he looks down and his guns are missing. Oh, no. So Katya has to rush to put the guns back together as 47 takes on these men unarmed. But we already knew that 47 is the best of the best, right? That's why they made 53 more agent versions because 47 is the best one. He takes all these guys down with ease, you know, no big deal. In an elevator, 47 trades his knife for a random kid's inhaler. <laughs> The kid stands there looking all evil with this giant knife in his hands. Katya pops up at the facility her father is living at and we get an explanation from her father. You are your mother's daughter. 47 attempts to flee with Katya and her father. They get chased by John and his men. 47 drives this red Audi like he's from Fast and the Furious. Holy shit! 
shit. His plot armor works overtime in this next scene. He takes down about a dozen men. Katia's father gets shot as they try to escape, so they leave him behind. Katia's father says at one point that it isn't the body that makes the agent, it's the mind. An agent's advantage is not his body, John Smith. It's his mind. And that's supposed to explain why 47 is better than all the subsequent versions of the agents. You will never be as good as him. And it's supposed to be this big revelation, you know? And it would be if 47 didn't do so much dumb shit earlier in the movie. <laughs> By the time this movie approached the ending, I did not give a shit about what was happening at all. I don't care about this evil guy, John Smith or Brian. I don't care about Katya. 47 is a bland know-it-all, perfect super soldier. There's nothing about this movie that pulls you in and makes you stay. Unless you came here to laugh. So if you wanna gather some friends together, it's a pretty good time. All right, let's wrap up the movie. So this evil guy that no agent has ever been able to get close to killing wants an army of super agents or something. If that isn't super trite, I don't know what is. So 47 remotely flies a helicopter into their building. I'm not sure if Katya is in the helicopter because it looks like she is and it appears like she exits the helicopter when it's in the building. And if this is the case, it's pretty hilarious that they would fly a helicopter into a building and hope for the best. Just watch this shit. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Throughout this movie, there's a bunch of moments when Katya uses her agent abilities to predict what's gonna happen. This is done so much throughout the movie that it gets repetitive and annoying. We get to see her mind's eye, I guess. There's just too much mind's eye, you know? Oh, look at the cool blurry footage. Oh my God, this is what she sees. I don't care, stop doing that. This would be so much cooler if they did it once or twice tops, you know? This built-in body armor shit makes these last fights so dumb. <laughs> Get them out. 47 does these pistol punch things. <laughs> Like he literally punches and shoots at the same time. Who wrote this shit? <laughs> it doesn't make any tactical sense whatsoever. And it just looks weird. 47 ends up killing John by using the building's electricity. Katia's father looks down at Katia from a chopper and watches as they kill some guys. And he says, your mother would be proud. Your mother would be proud. Wait, what? She would be? Oh, so she wanted her daughter to be a murderous, rampaging psycho. The perfect super soldier that can kill a bunch of people. That's what she wanted for her. Except I thought that's what they didn't want for her, right? That's why they stole her away from the agent program in the first place? I wanted you to have no part of what I was. Why would he look down at her and be like, oh my God, my baby girl, she's perfect, you know? No, in reality, he would look down and be like, I failed you. I thought the purpose was to avoid making her a killing machine, but now she is one. Why is he happy? So the evil guy that's in charge of all the agents was 47's target all along. And everything he did in this movie was to get to him. Oh my God, it's such a crazy twist. 47 proves to Katya that he has a conscience by the end, but it doesn't matter because nobody's watching at that point. You know, everybody turned this movie off 20 minutes ago, so. <laughs> I'm the first one to have seen this, aside from the filmmakers, so I'm honored to tell all of you. At the end, 47 is faced with a clone of himself, and they shoot at each other. We also find out that John didn't die. Oh my god. Or Brian. Brian didn't die. What's with this obsession with making everybody- nah, Whatever, I don't care. This movie's dog shit. I hate it. It's so bad. <laughs> But I hope I was able to entertain you guys at least a little bit. Let me know what I should review next in the comment section down below. Make sure to check out AlienClothing.com. We have a shit ton of new stuff over there and I think you will love it. Like this shirt, this hoodie, this shirt, this hoodie, this shirt. We sell more than shirts and hoodies over there. <laughs> and that'll do it guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.